overlays, it's suggested that you, if you choose three the first time, you stick with three because of the gearing that's been worn and so forth. Now I found that most of these LeBlancs in here, you can you can use any number. They're pretty well taken care of. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just go in maybe a couple thousands with my cross feed and reset it to zero. And this lever here, this is your this is your uh, threading lever. Your head never comes off this. Ever. If you do take your hand off this, at some point you're going to grab the feed lever. And that's not going to stop this thing from going that way. So keep your hand on this lever. Wait for the number to come around. Lift it up when it gets to the end. Okay? Now, what I do, I've got an example of a thread there. Lopsided. And I have a thread gauge. So to make sure, and the thread gauge comes with all of these little leafs in it that has different threads per inch. To make sure it's a 13, it should match each one of those lines, and it does. So it's properly set up. <coughs> So that's what that is used for. Now, this thing always, it also comes in handy, let's say you, you have a bolt at home that broke or something, you have to go to the hardware store and replace it. If you have one of these in a micrometer, you can figure out exactly what thread you have on that yeah. bolt to replace it. So this is also a handy device to have at home. If you, go to, if you have a hardware store. <laughs> okay. Make the mustache, mustache, uh, yeah, trim, yeah, rumor. <laughs> the bigger ones, yeah. yeah. Depends on the size of your mustache. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is back this away one revolution. All the way around, past zero and come back into zero. Why am I doing that? So you're getting rid of slop. Slop in the lead screws. Remember any of these lead screws, when I reverse direction, you have wear on the acne threads so it, you're not actually moving for a short period of time so you want to go way beyond that <laughs> I mean it's easiest to remember the zeros okay I'm gonna bring it back to the beginning and go back into zero okay, now here's the little trick I was telling you about on this center gauge on the back of it you'll see threads per inch Okay. And it'll say a number after that in decimal. For 13, it says 100 thousandths. Now I'll pass that around. See that number right next to the 13? 0 .100. Just pass that around, make sure it gets back to me over here. That number is the double depth of thread. Okay. Which means thread depth over here and thread depth over on this side added together. Those are, they still mark those for American national threads, not unified national. Unified national tends to be about two to three thousandths less than what that's stamped at. Okay, now that's a steric gauge and it's still stamped with American national. So about a hundred thousandths for double depth. I'm going to use this to go that hundred thousands, okay? Or I'm, I'm not going to use this, I'm sorry. This is your compound rest, it's at an angle. So if I use that, be I'm coming in at an angle, and you could trig it out. But the easiest way is to take this, because they're both touching now at zero, back this out a full revolution, bring it back into zero, and turn this in my double depth. So I'm going to go a hundred thousandths on this on the on the cross feed. And notice how far away I am still. Because I'm back that in. one revolution away. So now what that means is that when this gets back to zero, 
one revolution around, I'll have gone my hundred thousandths deep. Okay? So I'm going to set this to zero again. Now I don't completely go all the way with this. I'll get to the point where I'm about five thousandths left, and then I'll use this one to go straight in. And the whole purpose of that is because you're cutting a thread, getting all greased up. You're cutting a thread using the compound wrist, so it's going that way. So you're always cutting on this face. Okay. At the very end, I'm going to go straight in and clean up that face too. To flatten it. So you get both faces. Right. Here we go. Oh. Now right now, I'm not even close to touching, so all I have to do is bring this in, get relatively close, and I've got to get back around to zero on this. That's right over here. I don't have far to go. So my first pass, I'm going to take quite a bit. I'm going to right on the 100 mark. Zero is directly opposed. Okay. And put some oil on there. And wait for a number to come around. Get it going in that direction. Back it up a revolution. Go back to the beginning. Turn it in a revolution. Take some more off. Oil. Wait for the number to come around. Out of revolution. Back to the beginning. In a revolution. Some more off. Wait for your number. Out of revolution. Back to the beginning. You know revolution. Take some more off. How much are you doing there? I really don't know because I'm going in at an angle, but it's less than what it says on here. Right. Um, my zero is right here. Uh -huh. That says 175. So oh. it would be 25. Wait, wait, I started at 75 actually. Okay. Keep it oiled up. Remember, don't grab that one. That's your feed. Yep. It will go off the feed run. Look at how fast that's turning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're going to wait for a number. Motor revolution. Back to the beginning. Since you got your pitch set, it's going to automatically set up at the same line every time. Yep. And you go with it. That's why you're going to the same number, isn't it? I no, changed it. it. This one, I'm trying to hit that zero. Remember, I backed that out, mm -hmm. and I went in my double depth with this one. And you're still not using the same number every time? No, I'm not. Almost up to zero. I got about 10,000 on this dial. Oh, 
Sure is zero. In a revolution. And on the thread feeder. Okay, I'm going to stop just for a second. And I want you to notice that you can still see the red on the tips of those threads. Okay, that's important because if it, can't, if it comes to a sharp point, one of two things. You've either gone too deep or you didn't turn that diameter down properly. Yeah. You still should see red on there. Okay. Back. Revolution. Back to the beginning. Inner revolution. And this one's on zero almost, right? Okay. So instead of using this, I'm going to use this. No. This one's on. I'm just going to go in maybe, I don't know, four thousandths. Reset it to zero. At this point, I would take a measurement before I did this step. Okay. So I'm just going in about four thousandths with my cross feed. And you can see it cut out on both sides now. The other thing you want to keep in mind is uh, when you cut that groove in your part at the very end of the thread, it said 15,000 smaller than the minor diameter. I should never touch that because my minor diameter is created by my tool tip. So I should not touch. Back to the beginning. Inner revolution. Now what I'm going to do is take an, what's called an air cut. I'm not going to move anything. And that'll take out what's called tool deflection. And I'm going to do it a couple times. Out. On a CNC lathe, you will take maybe five or six air cuts automatically. It does that. Takes all of the tool deflection out. This is kind of like a manual one. Okay, now I'm not really cutting anything. So I'm going to back this out, put it on zero again, remembering that I'm a full revolution away. Come back to the beginning, put it in a revolution. I'm set for another cut, right? Okay. What I'm going to do right now is get all the chips out of the threads. This is a file card and a knife edge file. And it looks like a knife. Okay. And a regular file. Take this file, this has no handle on it, this will go right through your hand. So I'm going to hold it like this, and I'm going to tip it this way, and let it follow the threads. And I'm going to tip it this way, and let it follow the threads. Okay. And I'm going to take my regular file, and remember that's rotating, this is where long sleeves get you. And I'm just going to lay this on top of the threads. Now that's going to remove my red. That's all I'm doing basically. Nice and easy. Okay. I'm going to take my file card and this part of it with the wire brush on it and clean those threads out.
And when you're done, you should have a nice smooth thread like that. Okay. Now, just in case I have to take a recut, I'm going to remember what jaw that's on, put it in gear, and I can take loosen that and actually take my part out. Because as long as I put it back in, this will repeat. That's the whole benefit of having the lathe center. about at 4.43 right now, right at the lower end of it, okay. Now this actually, the nut actually fits better on this part than it does on that. And the reason is my, my major diameter when I started was a little bit bigger, okay. So there's virtually no slop in that, the nut itself. You can't go back and forth like that. Be a good what would be a disadvantage of using this method here? A disadvantage? There's really, uh, typically in machine shops, you will be using a pitch micro. Yeah. Uh, you check them out from the tool print. Or if you're cutting threads, you'll have one available. Uh, the three wires are relatively cheap. I yeah. think a set of three wires is maybe 50 bucks. It's not cheap, but it's. And then you gotta have a friend compared. to help you. The pitch micrometer. Yeah, you get it by yourself. You know, two, three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, they also sell pitch micrometers that. that are 